Give me one second to put this on. It's a Sunday morning. I'm not really ready for work. As you can tell, my hair's not done at all. And I left my left brace at home, but I'm going to make it. There we go. That might work now. Um, this is Billy. And this is only going to be his third haircut. He is a beautiful boy. And I want to show you a few things that you can do to um, improve the texture of the coat a little bit because he's a little soft. And I'm just going to groom him on camera because I can. All right, it just the way it works. I'm going to start off with my little bitty clipper inside his ears because that's just what I do on schnauzers. Now, he has had his ears cropped fairly recently. This dog's only about six months old. He's huge, but he's only about six months old. Um, this is only the second time he's ever had his ears shaved, other than at the clinic when he had his ear crop done. So the fact that he's even letting me do this is pretty amazing. And I think one of the reasons why is that I'm not going at it with a big clipper, I'm going at it with a specialty clipper. Now what I'm using is the mini Figura, but you can use a mini Arco, you can use a mini Bravura, you can use a Peanut, you can use any of those. I like this one because it's really, really tiny. I'm not even sure they're available anymore, but it's what I'm using. Let me move my phone off the table. Since I'm working with the shop phone for video, I don't need my phone on the table. Didn't realize it was there. Now, when I go into the ear, I keep my finger behind the ear and I roll out. And that's going to get me a nice tight edge. And in fact, let me see if I can move the camera just a little bit closer since I'm working by myself today and there's nobody to help me do this. That might work. We can show you exactly what I just did. Finger behind the ear. Come along the ear edge and roll it out. And what that does is gives you a really tight, clean edge on the inside. And you're not going to, you risk less risk of cutting because you have your finger on the outside of the ear. And I hold, Billy, hold the ear flat with my fingers so that I'm clipping up onto my finger. I've watched a couple of people try to do it without that, and I don't know how it happens. It scares me every time. And again, down into the ear canal, because you know how I feel about plucking. I don't like to do it. I will do it on dogs with cropped ears because some of you may or may not be aware, but when they crop an ear, they actually take, and this dog's ears are not done that way, but sometimes they take a piece of the ear and fold it inward to make a little bell shape at the bottom to make them stand up. This dog's ears are actually done correctly where they have a piece of the ear removed. I hate this surgery. But when, the way this one's done, it exposes the ear canal, so you're going to want to get all of this ear hair out because otherwise it's not going to look good. I am not going to do that on camera because I do not know how he is going to behave. And if he does not let me and fights me on it, then I am going to stop. And that is going to be as clean as that ear gets. Plain and simple. I'm going to get down inside this one a little bit better. But as you can see, if you come along here and look, when I put my finger there, I'm getting a nice crisp edge. A lot less going behind and scissoring. And because this is such a tight blade, there's really very little chance of nicking one. Now, I'm not going to say it can't happen because the minute I say it won't happen, I'll do it on camera. But I very rarely nick a schnauzer ear using that little clipper. All right. While we're that close... Basket. While we're this close up and personal, let me get, and remember I always start off with clean everything in between dogs. This is really clean, it hasn't been used since it was clean. When I do pads, I set my blade on a 40, and I don't go down in very much, I just sort of skim them out. Now one thing I do to save time, is I skim the top of the pad as well. I hate the way this camera does. I gotta figure out how to turn off the autofocus. But I don't get all that hair out for several reasons. Um, one, it offers a little bit of protection for the pads. 
to down here any amount of irritation in the pads and fungus sets in. I used to be a scooper. I scooped every pad. I got every hair out. I made sure that it was done really, really clean. And most of the dogs that came in my shop, that's right, oh, can't get to me, <laughs> had ear infections, or pad infections rather, they licked their feet. So since we've stopped doing that, there's not as much yeast, there's not as much foot licking. I mean, I still see it, but it's not anywhere near as much as it used to be. Remember, don't hold your feet at a weird angle. Let the dog's angles set how you hold the foot. Follow the anatomy of the dog. Bend at the stifle. Bend at the pastern. And again, I don't scoop out all the way unless they're matted. Now, if they're matted, I will. If they're not matted, I don't. And yeah, I suppose you could use a 10 blade, but I never found that it got them very clean. So if you're going to go that route, just skip it all together and just scoop the outside. Just get the hair right off the outside. In Cocker Spaniels and a lot of sporting dogs, you don't do that anyway for showing because they like to leave it because it builds the foot up a little bit. Okay. He's got his feet done. And again, I like to lift the legs to do sandies. I don't like to lift the dog. I know a lot of people will stand them up on their back ends. I don't like to do that because I find that it puts a lot of pressure on dogs' knees, a lot of pressure on their back ends. I will do it on a really small dog, let's say a four or five pound poodle that doesn't have any problems. But, thank you, Billy. When you're talking about a dog this size and you stand them up, you can actually put a lot of pressure on their back legs. This is not a dog that stands on his knees to begin with, or stands up on his back legs to begin with. Notice how I have the leg out at an angle? And yes, I'm bending over. My table would go up high enough that there's no reason to do that. Except that I'm going to have to do that because I can't see what I'm doing over there. Alright, inside back legs is good. And then I go up to pretty much the belly button line, where the umbilical cord would have come out. You can feel where that is in most dogs. I clean that out on male dogs because it keeps them cleaner. All right. Under the butt. And on schnauzers, that is a really tight area. So I'm using a 10 setting. And again, this is a figura. The reason there's a rubber band on it is it's incredibly loud. These things are fragile. I prefer a bravura to a figura for the fact that they are easier to repair. There's less damage if you drop them. And let's face it, I think we all drop them to a degree. But I like this one because it's a little smaller, the shape is better, and the button's on the side. So I just use what's called a ranger band. To hold the clipper on you can get them on Amazon I think this is the one and a half inch and they are a bear to get on the first time you do them probably the first ten times you switch the blades up but after that they stretch out enough just to hold them and yes a snap-on comb will go right over this but all right let's get our sanitary work done we're almost there buddy Now he had a bath yesterday, so I'm going to brush him out. <laughs> Another thing I do when I clean up hair off the table, I either use my vac system or I try to get as much off as possible and put it in the trash can just to minimize cleaning. Okay. In order to take this off, move the ranger band down, pop off, it's done. I'm going to switch blades on that in just a second. I'm looking for something I don't see, to be honest with you. It means I put it away. That's exactly what that means. It means I put it away. But I'm going to take him. Uh, uh, uh. Come on, baby. Stand up. Good boy. He's doing really good. I know some adult schnauzers that get done every month that I wish were as good as this puppy is. 
hopefully he's going to stay this way. His mother is a good client and she understands that he needs to be done often. So hopefully it's going to work. Now he had a bath yesterday, like I said. My goal was to get him groomed yesterday and well, you can see how well that worked, right? So we're going to brush him out again. The good news is we didn't put any product in him yesterday when we were working on him. We just bathed him, brushed him, bathed him, fluffed him, brushed him because he's boarding and it was supposed to rain all night long. So I was really worried that it wouldn't hope that he would have to be rebathed this morning. And it turns out that actually my backyard didn't flood. Go me. And as a result, he held up pretty well. He's, he's actually in pretty good shape. Now, I'm impressed with the groom, to be honest with you. And actually, I think for his very first haircut ever last time, he had had his face done, but that was it at the breeders. And for him to have been done probably five weeks ago now, four weeks ago, he held up pretty well. But anyway, that's what we're working with. Now, let me lower my table and show you how I do their backs. Please note that my brush just went in the blue bin to be cleaned after this dog. Gotta remember to clean your equipment. Just on a side note, if you don't clean your equipment in between every dog, you can pass along yeast, you can pass along staff, you can pass along fleas, you can pass along anything that this dog may have on his skin. And even though he looks healthy, and he probably is, and you don't see any skin irritation, it's always important to clean your stuff. And if that means having three brushes, then that just means having three brushes, or five Bravira blades in rotation, then five Bravira blades in rotation. I'm gonna start off with the Andes Horse de shutter. I don't think it's going to pull out very much, but what this is going to do, it's really not, is it's going to open up the hair follicles. Can you stand up for me? By removing dead hair. And by doing that, it's also going to stimulate the top coat to grow a little faster. I'm not really getting out much undercoat. And yes, schnauzers have undercoat. That goes over there. This is also a course. Where is my find? Hmm. Right there. On the other station. Don't know why. Guess she didn't give it back. But we're going to go through and try to pull out some undercoat. Oh, that's doing better. And you use it just like you would a brush. And you follow the lay of the hair. I could drill that into everybody. That's the most important thing I teach. Follow the lay of the hair. It's the most important thing as far as technique goes because that will eliminate a lot of your blending issues. Now, when I use this, I come down into the skirt, which I'm going to show you on the other side, and down into the legs to help blend some too. use it just like a slipper brush except that I hold the skin taut as I'm coming down and then I'll blend down into the leg and into the skirt which I know is not a skirt but is an underline but we all call it a skirt at least everybody I know calls it a skirt old habits die hard when I was grooming it was called a skirt or learning to groom rather it was called a skirt so as a result it's really hard to get out of the habit of calling it but as you can see, I come down into the leg to blend it in. He's not losing a lot this time. Last time I pulled out a ton. And you can do this before you groom him or after you groom the back, whichever you want. I'm doing it before, quite obviously, before I clipper the back because it's long enough now to catch. If you're working with a really overgrown dog, do it before and after. If you're working with a really short dog, which this one's very short because he was just done about, I guess it may be four or six weeks ago, then you wanna do, do it before so you have enough length for the tools to grab. Now, if you don't have a de-shedder, an Andis de-shedder, number one, you should get one because I think they're the best thing going. Number two, get a strip and knife. 
which I'm fixing to pull out and show you something. I know y'all love my words that I've used my fixing to. My stripping knives are right here in a bag. Well, somebody used them since me. Okay. If you don't have a Van Disty shutter, but you have a Coke King, they work as well. Because that's somebody used mine. But again, I'm not really going to pull much out with him because it's already been done. There's nothing in there coming out. So we're going to skip over to a carding knife. And which one you use is going to be completely determinate on what you're doing and what feels good to you. I am using right now a Mickey or Mikey, depending on how you call them. Mickey, I think, is what I called them all the time. I got these when I was learning how to groom. And then Sam Tracy and his wife Candy sent me some from Ireland because we can't find them in the U.S. easily. These are fabulous. I love the, the plastic handles because they're a little comfortable. And we're going to go right through here. And these are actual stripping knives, so you can actually pull it, or you can use them as a carving knife. But whatever you choose to use, see I'm getting out a ton of hair, it will pull out the undercoat and leave the top coat, which will improve texture, color, It will maintain color. It will maintain texture because you're removing just the soft undercoat. And remember, the color in schnauzers and in most terriers is at the end of the hair shaft. So when you clip it short, you remove all that color. I have a feeling he could turn into what I call a two-tone schnauzer, which is really light on top and darker on the bottom if we didn't card him routinely. So this is going to be part of his grooming routine all the way along. Do I charge more for it is going to be the question I get asked. No, I don't. Because to me, it's just part of the grooming. And I'm trying to stay out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. But it can be hard. And you can see what I'm doing. Okay, you can see how smooth this back coat looks. In fact, I'm going to be honest with you. I think when I take my snap-on comb to him, I'm not going to pull off much hair. So I picked the right tool for the job, and I'm getting out tons of hair. And as you can see, all of that undercoat. Another reason to card out a schnauzer, besides color and texture, is that it will remove the dead hair and prevent blackheads or clogged follicles from coming in. Now, I have a theory that what we call schnauzer funk is actually a lot genetic. Let's see if we can turn him around. Can you turn around, buddy? I think a lot of that skin stuff is genetic. And I really believe, because I don't see it down here anymore. We used to. Years ago, we had a breeder. I'm in Albany, Georgia. There was a breeder in Dawson, Georgia. And I cannot for the life of me remember his name. But his dogs, every single one of them, had skin problems. Every single one of them had schnauzer funk or comedones. Every single one of them had allergies. He's no longer around. His dogs are no longer alive. And guess what? We don't see them anymore. I do exactly two dogs who have those skin problems. Two. Just two. And I am going to bet you money that they are related to his dogs. Now, the reason why a lot of you see them is because your gene pool is small. And any area where you have a breeder producing them, the puppies that are in the area that then are bred are going to produce those problems, which is why you see stuff I don't see. We don't see yeasty cockers down here. None at all. Well, we see one. And she's not from here. She's from a different area of the country. And part of that is because the dogs that are being bred are healthy. I don't see a lot of alopecia and palms down here. And again, I put that into being just the genetic makeup of what we see here. Um, that is a genetic problem. Alopecia in palms is most assuredly genetic. It is linked in lines. And we just don't see it down here. So if you're seeing a lot of Pomeranians that don't have hair later in life, I'll guarantee you they're all related. It may be distantly, and you may have to do some serious genealogical work to find them, but I guarantee you, that they're related in one way, shape, or form. And it may not be a direct mother, father, 
type relationship. It may be an aunt, cousin, sister, brother, that kind of thing. And those are hard to trace back. But especially if you live in an area where a lot of puppies are coming from the same location or the same provider, like pet store or whatever, and you're seeing a problem, it's genetic because they're all getting from the same line. We have a breeder here in town who is lousy. Just point out lousy. And she is a puppy mill. I mean, there's no other way to word her. She is a puppy mill. Oh, that looks really pretty. And she, she produces poodles with hip dysplasia and bad knees by the age of one. Not kidding. By one years old, these puppies are out at the ankle, at the knee, and at the hip. Every one of them. So badly that I know two have been put down and three or four of them I know have had multiple surgeries to fix it. And what do their parents do? They go right back and buy another one from the same breeder. Stupid. Without a doubt. All right. Well, now let's get back to this. Anyway, just like everything else, though, it's genetics. Genetics play a huge role in all of that. And now we're going to do his clipper work. Oh, my gosh. I love your coat. It's really soft. He has a sore right there. Yep, he has a hole right there. Got into a fight with his uh, German Shepherd brother. He has several punctures. One's right there. There's another one up here. They're mostly healed up, but I have to be careful. And my comb keeps catching that scab right in there. All right. Clipper work, buddy. One of the reasons I can do things really, really quickly is I have a pattern. I have... Pattern's not quite the word. I have a routine. I do certain things in a certain order. And as a result, my body just goes into muscle memory and we just do it. I do pads, belly, butt, usually under the eyes if I'm clipping it out. Ears, body work, head, done. Legs, done. I don't know why I do it that way, but I've always done it that way. So we do. I do pads. Belly. Butt, eyes, ears, usually on schnauzers I will actually do their head and then their body. On some dogs I reverse it. On shizus I reverse it. On shizus I do body and then head. I don't know why, but on schnauzers I like to start here. Probably because I already have my blade on the right setting. So anyway, and then legs. And then I finish with nails almost every single time. And you probably can't see that because the dog is in the way, but I just wrote it all down on the board behind me. Come on, stand up. Good boy. Good boy. I know people who would push him up really hard. I don't want to do that to this dog. I want him to enjoy the process and I want him to know what we're doing. All right. I have it on a nine, and I'm going to come backwards. And when you get to the zygomatic arch, you float off into the bra. That gives you a flatter plane, because remember, they're supposed to look like a brick when you're done. And again, we'll do it this way. Try to this way. Come. Zygomatic arch float down in. That is going to make your brow appear like it grew that way as well. It's going to look really natural when you do that. You just start at the occiput. When you come forward, you're going to set your beard. Remember, Hard to see on him. 
On him, I'm going to go right to the corner of the eye and come down. And I'm going to hold my beard forward to shave to the moles, which I've already set flat the last time I groomed him. If you can't see what you're doing, lift your head up like this so that you can. Now, I just took that off so I could see the my lines, but then I'm going to come backwards. And I'm going to set a U, which starts literally right, the Adam's apple, it's hard on him because he's not, he's a puppy, excuse me, the, the breastbone is here, I like to go about two fingers above, but that's going to vary depending on the dog. On him, two fingers above is just about right. And then I'm going to fix my lines on this side, make sure they're the same as they are on the other side, otherwise you're going to have a problem. Now we're still waiting on his beard to grow out because the breeder went down his nose and inside his face a little bit further than I want to go. Don't shave down a nose unless the owner asks and even then beg not to do it because it changes the entire look of the dog. Now, if your dog has poopy cheeks or other things, you can adjust your line a little bit. And I'm going to shave the ears. <laughs> I'm going to go down to a 10 on ears because I'm not getting the edge I want. And again, remember, I hold my finger underneath it, shave a flat plane, as flat as you can get on these little cropped ears. It is hard to do. And I know some of you are going, how many schnauzers can you groom? I groom a bunch. I groom... Oh, I don't know. I'd say there's probably 200 on my schedule. I do a lot. However, we have a local breeder who is producing a lot who is no longer breeding. And I have a feeling that my numbers are going to shrink once these dogs start to go away. This dog is not local. He's from outside the area. Um, I don't, however, have a single wire fox terrier on my schedule. I don't have a Lakeland. I don't have an Airedale. I don't have a Welsh. So, it balances out to where this is what I have, and we do a lot of them. If I were going to get into breeding down here, I would be breeding terriers. I'd pick one and I'd breed a terrier. In fact, I might breed schnauzers. I have had some schnauzers before. Alright, and because I want to leave along, I'm going to use the purple comb, which is also called the quarter inch or the number four. And as you can see, it goes on even with my ranger band. So I've already carded his back. So I'm not going to be pulling off much hair anyway. I wanted to leave some length. Gosh, that hurts. I'm having some severe hand problems, y'all. I mean, going to have to have surgery to fix my right hand. So pay attention to me when I say groom smarter, not harder. Because in the years that I groomed harder, I hurt my hands. Both of them have had, well, the left one's had surgery, the right one is about to have to have surgery. Probably three. One on, one on this joint, one on this joint, and one on this joint. This joint is being cleaned out during the surgery for these two because it has infection in it from a dog and arthritis is set in, so they're going to go in and clean up the arthritis in it while I'm already out of work on it. Now, do you see how easy and how smooth my transitions are when I, number one, follow the lay of the hair, which it grows this way, and then here it goes this way, up here it doesn't, it goes that way. So you have to watch and change your, you have to change your angles as you go. And here, it actually goes this way, but I'm going to blend down and in. So... And I know, a lot of you are thinking, I don't have any clients that will let me leave this this long. Well, the pattern is the same, and the technique is the same, even if you're going down with a 9 or a 7 off. Yeah, that just happened. Some people will not go this short. Some people will go, you know, shorter than a 5, which that's about what this is. I like the snap-on comb better because I just feel like I get better blending. All right. Now, we have our lines blended down into the leg down into the skirt, down into the back leg. I'm going to take 
take off my snap-on, fix my blade, and I'm going to set my chest. You guys are getting a full room on a schnauzer for Christmas. Yay! There we go. Good boy. Trying to let him adjust himself. And through here, I'm going to take this down. I'm going to go from where I went really short and blend my... When I'm blending using my blade, I have it at an angle. And you sort of float off and in. So, I mean, I push down in where I clippered backwards to get it to blend better. And then come straight down into my chest. Like that. Now, because I have my blade at an angle up through here, it's actually held at an angle, and I can even drag it like I'm doing right there to do some more blending. Use it to sculpt. It's a cool technique. I learned it when I was competing with a Cocker Spaniel, watching Pina, Irina Pikasavich, watching her do it. I was like, that is wickedly cool. Show me how you did that. When you drag the blade, it actually just takes off fuzzies and it allows you to blend a lot faster. I always put it on a nine when I'm dragging. But that dragging technique is amazing for blending because you can just blend that line right on down and in. No thinning shears required. And see how pretty that is? No thinning shears required. Come down here into the shoulder, same thing. And then you float off into your longer back coat. Something I see a lot that I think a lot of you have forgotten is that schnauzers, in fact, all dogs don't have to be the same length all over, even if they are a shave down or all the same length. Like this dog's back, for example, is shorter here, longer here, and shorter here, just depending on what you need for fill and what you need for blending. Where you're blending into the dog, you're going to have longer, I mean, shorter hair. So, anyway. Now on him, I am going to go right here between his eyes with my blade and with the corner of my blade and just take out the brow separation. He has so much hair in there, I could do it with thinners, but I'm going to choose to do it that way. Now let me show you the rear because a lot of people forget to show you the rear. So while I'm thinking about it, let me show you the rear. The rear is really tight and blended really, really well. With a really tight rear coming into a body, so I'm going to again do my dragging technique and blend it. How pretty. Very pretty rear end. He's got a really cute look. Okay. I'm mildly obsessed with the way Schnauzer butts look because I think they're really cute. I actually bought a male Schnauzer one time because he had a really cute butt. He turned out to be a really pretty dog with a really crappy coat. So I placed him at a pet home. I couldn't have competed with him, which was my goal, but he was really cute and his little butt just sucked me in. That's not a lie. That's the truth. All right, let's see. A few places in there I see they're a little high. We'll get that. I'm gonna leave this hair here. It's a little longer because he has a little dip right below his tail and that'll fill that in. Okay, bud. Now, that's used. We'll put that there. I'm going to leave that blade on there right now because we're probably going to need it again. Thinning shears, thinning shears, thinning shears. Between the eyes, thinning shears are what I use most of the time. Sometimes on some really short dogs, I will take my clipper under there. But on him, I'm just going to clean it out with my thinners. And before anybody asks, the brace is a push or, um, yeah, it says push. It also says up and I forget what it's called from there, but if you just Google push carpal support brace, you can find it. I, 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 no, 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 no. Good boy. For a puppy and to be only having been done a couple of times, this dog is doing so dang good. Especially to be a schnauzer, huh, buddy? Huh, Billy? It's really funny. His name is Billy. My groomer's name is Billy. We got a kick out of that. All right. I'm going to 
to sit on down in the basket, even though I know I'm going to need them again. And I'm going to start with getting hit off my table. Just so I can see what I'm doing and you can see what I'm doing better. Thank you. There's not a whole lot of schnauzers out there that I would trust to do that. All right, and I'm gonna do his, most of his work with chunkers. And I know y'all are gonna ask, these are a limited edition that are sold out. I don't have any more of them. I'm sure that you could find some. They are a Japanese stainless 22 to, or 23 tooth, seven and a half inch chunker. And they do great. I have never crossed these up, knock on wood. The minute I say that, I will, right? Column legs. Some people like baseball shaped legs, baseball bat shaped legs, where the legs start a little bit smaller at the bottom. And work their way up, like upside down baseball bat. I prefer a column leg whenever I can do one. This dog has got the best furnishings. He has very incorrect hair, but that leads to very nice furnishings. They're heavy, they're soft, there's volume. He's a fantastic little dog. He's cute as a button. Now let's get that off. We're gonna comb the legs up. Uh, don't do that. Now one thing I want you to notice is that I'm combing the chest hair up. And I have to do this in order to do both legs because you have to have a flat plane there. That comes off almost at the skin. And the only hair you're going to see is going to be a little bit underneath. So you can leave a little bit here if the dog is really flat chested, which this puppy is right now, but his chest has not dropped yet. And whatever you do, make sure that you get the point of elbow taken off. I remember when I was learning how to groom schnauzers, that was drilled into me by Karen. That was get that elbow off. So I'm really picky about that. I don't want to see a point of elbow right there. Comb the hair up. And because he was just here, he's not taking that long to do. But even if he had been a while, this would be an easy groom because he's, he's doing really well. When you angle your shears there, make sure that you're blending into your line. And again, take that elbow off. It should come right up into the armpit. I clean out armpits on schnauzers, just like I did just there, where I take that hair out. What I have discovered on chunkers is that they leave a softer, more natural finish. And if I use them for legs, get your head up, buddy. Then I don't have anywhere near as much, um, get your head out of the way, scissor lines as I do if I'm trying to use straights. Use whatever you're comfortable with. You can use straights, you can use thinners, you can use chunkers. This to me just looks more natural. I don't want to put his head up any higher because I really want him to understand that I'm not hurting him. He's getting tired because he is a baby. Settle down. He also wants to go play. My dogs are on the floor right now and they're looking up at him like, hi, let's go, come on, let's go. And he can't play with Cricket, who is three and a half. Or Luke, who right now I think weighs four and a half. And God knows Cosmo does not want to play with him. Cosmo wants to just beat him up because he's a new dog on his territory. Now, I tend to do schnauzer feet first sitting on the table like this. And then I'll pick them up and go back behind. But again, you want to get that elbow point out. They should go down into the leg. There should be a straight line. Stop. Stop. Good girl. Good boy. Good girl. Your name is Billy. Where did I get that from? God knows. I've always said that if I call them a girl, they're a boy. If I call them a boy, they're a girl. I'm always wrong. Their name could be Patricia. I'm going to call them a boy. All right. Now, walk around here where I can see the back of the leg and fix the back of the leg. You really could use a straight for this. I just find that Right now, with my hand problems especially, the chunkers are more forgiving. And I'm going to set my line here. 
which should come to no lower than the elbow. On most dogs, your underline comes straight to your elbow line. Say most dogs, because there are gonna be some deviations. Comb the hair forward on the front of the leg. Somebody who tried to do a certification with us the other day actually combed all of this hair up. You don't want to comb it up. It's going to fall forward, so you want to leave it in the position that it's going to fall. Otherwise, you end up with column legs on something that can't be combed. You set a little bit of a tuck up. Not a lot. You're doing so good, Billy. Now, let's get this. When you're doing the hop, it's straight up and down from the hop to tail and around the foot. And again, I'm going to pick the foot up and tighten it up from underneath in a few minutes. But I'm going to set my basic line so I know where I want it to be. Good job. Now, I'm going to make sure I got my line right. A lot of times what I will do is I will lift the leg up. Comb it that way. Get inside. And then when you sit it down, for the most part, it's right. Now down through here, you want to fluff that up so that it pulls it in. Remember too, most schnauzers do not have this profuse coat in our grooming shops. They're not show dogs. Doesn't mean they can't look like one. Or as close as you can get. A lot of show dogs have got spray and chalk and everything else in their coats. And you can spray up a shop schnauzer. I do it quite often. He doesn't need it. His coat's doing just fine without doing it. Plus, it's still wet outside, and I can see him going outside and getting wet and going home sticky. All right. Let's turn him around. Actually, I'll do the other side of him off camera because there's no reason to keep you guys that busy or that long when you've already seen half of it. Got hair hanging out back there. I'll get it with my chunkers. Legs look good. Okay. Eyebrows. I use curved shears for eyebrows. And right now, the shears that I generally speaking use for curved shears, when I do eyebrows, don't work for me. My hand pressure is so weird because of my injury that they don't work for me. So I have to pull out a different pair. Typically, pet eyebrows are going to go to the opposite corner of the eye. Now, there is some conflicting information out there. Some people say they go to the same side. I was taught that schnauzers go to the opposite and Scotties go to the same, so you get an extreme arch. That being said, if you want what I call German eyebrows, which are incredibly long, then you're going to go to the same side. And on him, I want that look. For pets, I go to the opposite. For him, I'm going to go to the same and you put your shear at the corner of the eye, angle it towards where you want it, where you want the angle of the brow to go, and cut. Ideally, one cut. Make sure you get the eyelashes. I can no longer do it in one cut because of my hand. So, actually, let's try something. Do, do, do. Oh, I know where it is. Right over here behind me. I'm going to take a little bit of um, anti static spray or water, whatever you have. Oh, I hate it when it does that. I need to fix that. Wet the eyebrows just a little bit. It's a technique I had sort of, I only do sometimes. But when you wet those eyebrows, stop. Stop. And this is just anti-static spray. It will give you a little bit of hold so that you can get those eyebrows the way you want them. 
If you don't want to wet them, wet them. You want just a little bit of wetness to hold them. So that when you make your cut, there we go. You get a better, crisper finish. Stop pulling. Good boy. I used to be able to do them all in one cut. The reason I like to do, the reason I like to do them in one cut, stop, stop, is that it gives you a cleaner finish. All right. Again, make sure you get underneath the eyebrow and get the eyelashes off. Otherwise, they just hang down over the eye and it doesn't look pretty and clean and tight like you want a schnauzer to look. I think I just capped that one up a little bit. I'm not real good at this right now. I'm telling you, my hands are killing me. But anyway. I'm going to go back with some thinners and smooth them out. But there you go. Now, I edge my ears with scissors and I have where are they there they are little bitty hairdresser scissors for that that way I can control what I'm doing little bitty these are Kenji and I come up along I hold the air between my fingers and anything that sticks out gets scissored up real tight a lot of people are afraid to do that but if you put your finger right on the edge of the ear then your finger's actually protecting the ear leather and you're not going to cut it. This ear's tighter than the other one, probably because of the angle I was able to get to it at. In fact, I bet money on that. Nice tight ear. And then just blend a smidge down into the neckline. where there's a little bit of hair sticking up, not much. And then a little bit under here, you can undercut it to make it lay down better. Some people don't like to do that. His mother actually asked me to thin his beard out some so it didn't stick out so much. There's another way to do that while we're talking about that. And that is with your knives or your shedding, your shedding tools. Because again, schnauzers have undercoat. It's actually in their standard that they have undercoat. And by doing this, you bulk out the undercoat and make the top lay flatter. And if you'll notice, if you'll cooperate, this side lays a lot flatter than the side I haven't done yet. And just to show you that you can do it with a stripping knife as well. I find the de-shedder is a little more comfortable for them on their beards most of the time. Because it's like using a comb or a brush. And then because he does tend to poof out at the cheek, I'm gonna take my blenders uh, uh, uh. and come in here and take out a little bit of that from underneath to make it lay flat like that. Stop. Good boy. Now because he does poop out, I'm taking it just a smidge further in than I would do on a lot of dogs. And you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it will help them be, the beard lay flatter and blend better. Okay. And as you can see by looking, he has a brick shaped head. If you look at it from above, it looks like a brick. He has column legs. His underline is literally, his chest is right there. So his underline is right at the chest. I'm probably gonna shorten it up just a little bit right through there. In fact, I am. We're gonna go to right there. Get all that puppy coat off and just leave the adult coat. Blend it in. It should look like a seamless line. 
And other than me fixing his feet from the bottom, he's done. I guess I should probably finish his underlies so you guys can see what the whole thing looks like. Because right now you're seeing hair on that camera from the other side of them. Let's just do that. That's better. It's a lot better. But there you go. Natural look. Looks hand stripped even though it was just carded. And nice head, pretty feet and legs. Done. And he would be done 20 minutes ago if I hadn't been talking to y'all. So there you have it. That's how you do it. Merry Christmas, everybody. Ba -ba -ba. Billy says hi. Actually, Billy says, get me off this table. I'm done. Merry Christmas. <laughs>